Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys all how to paint this abstract fantasy painting with some drippy flowers and some bright beautiful colors here and we're working on a 16 by 20 canvas today. I am anyways. You guys can choose any size of canvas that you want and follow along with these colors I'm using or any other ones that you want to. Okay so don't worry if you don't have neon colors you can just use uh, the next brightest color that you have and if you're not sure what that might be for an al alternative just ask me in the uh, comment section below okay so we've got titanium white light blue violet bright aqua green turquoise and here we've got a couple of neons purple violet and pink I've got some cadmium light yellow hue and some Mars black I'm gonna begin the background with a large brush I've got a number 50 filbert brush now what I want to do is just get my brush a little bit wet. That's going to help blend the paint out of my brush. And I'm just going to start with my black. And where we're going to have it the darkest is going to be around the edges of the canvas. And then we're going to be drawn into the light source coming from right about here. So we just want to get this shaded in and start building up that background, all those shadow areas. Okay, and all I'm doing is just being quite free and loose with my brush. Little wiggles back and forth, little swirls. I'm gonna come up around the edge right about here. I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my brush. This time I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna start coming over top and picking up a little bit of that black. Start to blend that around and then we'll create some gray tones. If you don't have enough black and it's looking a little too light, just go ahead and take a little bit more. The idea is that you don't wanna have it all the same color. everywhere so a little bit lighter a little in some areas and a little bit darker in others so that's just going to make the whole landscape and painting look a lot more interesting I'm going to start bringing it up here now and add a little bit of white to the gray that's in my brush. A little bit of water as I go along. That'll really help release the paint out of my brush. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out and the next color I'm going to come in with is my turquoise. Okay, so we've got the turquoise here. Just load it up on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to start with a quick crisscross or figure eight.
just apply it however you feel comfortable with. That's what I tend to do. It's just these little figure eights or a crisscross. Little circles. So this turquoise is going to look really pretty with both of our violet colors, the blue and the purple, the neon one. Okay, so the next color I want to add, I'm going to take a bit of white first and a little bit of that yellow. So I'm going to start applying it partially around the brightest area, letting the turquoise work out of my brush at the same time. Work it out right up to the corner, top of the canvas. Okay, the next color I'm going to use is my blue violet. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of this around the sides. You can definitely overlap and go over part of your yellow and your turquoise. Don't be afraid to overlap those colors. Okay, so the next brush I'm going to take is my angle brush and I'm going to get it a little bit wet and this size is a number 12. You can just use a, I'm going to be coming in with some waterfalls in the background so if you don't have an angle brush you can use a flat brush, filbert or a fan brush. So what I want to do is create sort of a dark green color and I'm going to make it with my black and my yellow. So I'll get those two mixed up on my brush with a little bit of water and I'm going to start from this top here, pull and drop, turn my brush over. I've got a lot of uh, videos, tutorials on how to paint waterfalls so if you guys aren't really sure, follow along with me here because I'm really demonstrating <laughs> a lot of different waterfalls here or have a look in my playlist and you'll find a whole bunch on how to paint in acrylics for beginners. So I'm just gonna come around and notice how whatever side I'm starting to pull from, where I want the direction of my waterfall to be coming from, I'll choose the longest end of my brush. And then over here, I want it to be coming in from that side. 
then I'll turn the angle of the brush over. So I'm painting them dark first in order for my highlights to stand out. So just a light, light brush stroke like that initially first. And then just with a little bit of water on my brush, I'm going to soften them. Yeah, so if you have any trouble at all with painting waterfalls, I found that this brush works the best for my students and uh, it's really kind of fail proof. You guys will really like this brush. You can get it in all sorts of sizes. And I'm just going to blend around the next brush I'm going to be using. To create some foliage, foliage will be my um, oval mop brush. This is a one inch. I'm going to use the same colors and I'm just going to tap in. I did not get my brush wet first. You want to use your mop brushes dry for this uh, step. And I'm going to start coming in and adding some foliage, little bushes in and around all these waterfalls. And of course, we're going to have our light source in and around here, so I don't want to add too, too much there. And I'll just wiggle out, blend out a little bit here, and then a light little pull. So quite quickly, with just a few colors and brush strokes, you can start to create an instant little oasis like this. Just working out the rest of that yellowy green color. I'm going to just add a little bit more right in here. Now I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. And then I can use it to pull out a little bit more of that of the paint. Okay, I'm going to take another angle brush. This one's a little bit smaller. It's a number 10. So I had a number 12 before, and you can certainly use your number 12 if you have one. Um, I'm just going to use this because it's a little bit narrower and I can make some um, brighter areas in my waterfalls and not cover up so much of the dark that I have there. 
So I'm going to get this brush wet and I'm going to come in with my blue and my white. So a little bit of each color and I'm going to start from the side here. Let's get a little bit more on there. So we're going to add some more and at the same time go over those existing ones. having trouble getting the paint to flow nicely out of your brush you might just need a little bit more water so it's usually a little bit of both some people just beginners tend to go back for more paint right away um, but a little bit of water can really help because we do have quite a bit of paint in our brush but it's so thick especially if you're using heavy body paint like I am it's thick and sticks to the bristles, right? See like that. So you just need a little bit of water to work that out. Be careful if you have too much water, then you won't have any color or paint uh, showing up. It'll just dry uh, see through too transparent. Well, this is starting to really look like a place I'd like to to be. What about you guys? Are you having fun creating your own little oasis of waterfalls? I paint a lot of these on my channel. Staircases and waterfalls. I'm going to take a little bit more white now. And I'm just going to start on an angle. That's why I like using the angle brush. And I'm going to start to wiggle, wiggle, and pull and drop. That gives it more movement. Makes it look a little bit more like those cascading falls. A little bit of yellow in there. where we want it to be the brightest. I'm just going to take that again, a little bit of yellow and white here. And I'm going to start to come in with a little bit more foliage around here and I'm going to use a little bit more of my black and I've got my one inch um, oval mop brush again. I'll use, may as well use the rest of that yellow. There's not a lot there, but it just gives you a little bit more color. And I'm just gonna start creating more depth, helping to draw our eye in. Use a little bit of my blue violet.
more and more of the blue violet. really just want to gently push and tap with the tip of the brush or if you want fuller looking areas then push a little bit harder so I'm going over my darkest areas now with this blue violet so that it dries uh, into like a dark blue violet gray instead of just just black now that brush is getting pretty saturated so I'm gonna use uh, a little um, filbert brush to add some highlights to I've got a filbert brush here this is a number 16 and I'm gonna add some highlights to some of these bushes I need a little bit more yellow I'm going to use one of my neon cool yellows, lemon yellow. So I've got this one here, a nice, really beautiful lemon chiffon color. And actually, I'm just going to be a little bit more generous. So we're going to have some light back here. bit more white. I can even add a few little sun rays if you want. So just a little bit of that soft yellow in there and just very subtle uh, sun rays. And I'm just going to take a little bit more and add some light down here as well. Just gently, gently scumble over. Giving it sort of a mist from those waterfalls, that misty look that you get from the, the spray at the bottom of them. And I'm going to come in, <clears throat> excuse me, with another mop brush. Um, this one's a large uh, stipple round mop brush. You can use, uh, my other one's just wet right now, so I need another dry one and I'm just going to use this one. But you can use any stipple brush um, that you have uh, for this. And if you don't have a stipple brush, then just use one of your um, filbert brushes in a tapping stipple technique that'll give you the same effect it'll just be a little bit softer and these are just more fun to use so what I want to do is take the rest of this yellow with a little bit of my black and I'm going to start coming in with my darkest areas now
right away after I work that paint out of my brush. I'm going to take some of my purple violet and I'm going to go over top and start adding that. Wherever you want to have that punch of color, that's where you want to add it. It's going to dry darker, uh, especially being over top of and with some black. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of my blue violet now along with that. And we'll tap in some pretty highlights. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit more of my violet now. I'm really going to town on this violet, as you can see. I just think it looks so beautiful with that soft yellowy green background. Okay, now back over to my blue. And I'm just going to come from the top here and just start kind of tapping here. It can look like maybe there's some big wisteria trees. A little tap and gentle pull. Okay, the next color I want to use is my neon pink. I'm going to tap into this will give us some extra bright areas. So maybe with the sun rays coming down here, we'll have some spots that are gonna be a little bit brighter. I'm going to go back to my angle brush and a little bit of that yellow. A little bit with white, water, white, and yellow. And I picked up a little bit of pink there, so what I'm going to do is use it to pull into some of these soft sun rays.
I like a little hint of pink and orange and yellow almost. I like to make my sunrays kind of look like they've got, there's a rainbow. Okay, so now down here at the bottom, I'm going to take some turquoise and some of the blue violet. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color. A little bit of purple pink, black, well, you can take a little bit of turquoise, let's just mix up all those colors. Just add some shadows. over to with a clean brush my angle brush again with some uh, white and yellow we'll add a little bit of light sunlight down here. Okay, now I've got my number 10 flat brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that color, a bit more of the black so that all the colors that we mixed were here, but with just a little bit more black. I don't want to have too, too much paint on my brush. Come in and uh, just a slight, because I like how kind of mysterious this is. I don't want to add too many details to this staircase. And then a little bit of white in. See how subtle it is? It's not nothing too dark or too bright. You can gently pull down from your shadow line of your stairs, line your brush up from the brightest highlight, which is the top of your stairs. Okay, so I'm gonna call this painting all done. This was such a joy to paint. I'm glad I decided to turn the camera on and share this one with you. I'll see you guys all soon in my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.